Yes, I would like to uh, broadcast the results of our poll. Um, we see that the majority of our audience is uh, state DOT folks, but we do have a considerable uh, material supplier, academia, uh, private consultant, uh, and local agency uh, represented as well. So uh, very happy to have you with us. Uh, it's my pleasure at this time to introduce uh, the project sponsor and our host for the event, uh, Mr. Morgan Kessler. Well, hello all. Greg, can you hear me okay? I can hear you okay, Morgan. Okay, here we go. Uh, yeah, like Greg said, my name is Morgan Kessler, and I'm a civil engineer at the Turner Fairbank Highway Research Center in McLean, Virginia, and the contracting officer's representative, or as we call it, core, for this project. On behalf of the Federal Highway Administration, I want to welcome you to today's webinar. This webinar presents the findings of a recent FHWA research and development effort titled Recycled Asphalt Pavement Use in Pavement Preservation Surface Treatments. And it has, over the past couple of years, been looking at what agencies are using reclaimed asphalt pavement, or RAP, to place chip seals, slurry seals, and microsurface treatments, and how they're going about doing it. The work was headed up by Greg Duncan of Applied Pavement Technology, and he did a great job traveling the country, seeking out and documenting RAP and preservation use where it exists. We're also excited to have two of the case study agencies represented on today's webinar, and we welcome the presentations of Lisa Vega of the New York, or <laughs> sorry, New Mexico uh, DOT and Van Truong of the Los Angeles County Public Works Department. The findings presented by Greg, Lisa, and Dan will provide information to practitioners through documented case studies, best practices, testing, costs, and specifications for the use of recycled asphalt pavement and surface pavement preservation treatments such as chip seals, microsurfacing, and slurry seals. The result is some new tools for the toolbox in the form of documentation and methods that will be useful to pavement maintenance practitioners as they develop and deploy their pavement preservation programs. Along with this webinar, other, project, other products of the project will be full report documentation plus a tech brief that summarizes the research effort and findings in a short, concise format. I expect these to be published over the next few months or so. This webinar will run for approximately two hours, including time at the end to address any questions or comments. If any questions come up during the presentation, please type them in the chat pod. So with that, I'll thank you once again for joining the webinar. Looks like we've got some great attendance so far. And at this point, I'll pass the presentation back to Greg. Thank you. Thank you, Morgan. I just want to say we are uh, we we did max out our registration, so we we have uh, about 190 uh, to 200 folks registered for the event today. So this is a uh, um, a real uh, nod to the interest that everyone has in the uh, use of wrap in pavement preservation treatment. So. Uh, just a couple of things before we get started. I want to remind everyone the webinar is being recorded. Uh, and for those that weren't able to attend uh, live, we will have a link to the recorded webinar and it will be distributed afterward. Uh, over on the left-hand side of your screen, you see a question, a Q&A pod. Uh, and so that is an area where uh, participants at any time during the uh, during the webinar can pose a question and we will try to address those questions during our time here either uh, as we're going through the presentations uh, if, if, if it's relevant right then uh, or to a, uh, a question and answer period at the end of the webinar. So uh, please feel free at any time to type your question. Uh, we will try to answer it as soon as we can, but we will be monitoring that 
uh, along the way. Um, we also uh, desire really to make this an interactive program. Uh, we have some questions that we'll be asking you throughout the throughout the presentation, and you may want to make a note. The two at the end will be uh, what barriers do you see to using RAP in pavement preservation treatments? Uh, hopefully those barriers are reduced uh, by the time we get to that point. And the, the final question you may want to make a note is uh, what other products would be helpful to you to uh, maybe go forward in using RAP as a pavement preservation uh, source material. So uh, we will be polling the audience as we as we go go through the the day here. Um, just a word of introduction. My name is Greg Duncan. I'm the principal investigator uh, for this project. I work for Applied Pavement Technology. I'm a senior engineer and have uh, been working in the industry about 27 years. Uh, a large portion of my experience comes from the Tennessee Department of Transportation, uh, working in their materials and construction maintenance uh, and engineering bureau areas. So we appreciate the interest you've shown in the uh, topic here. So without further ado, we'll get started. Uh, as Morgan mentioned, the project objectives uh, really are to document the, the state of the practice for using RAP in pavement preservation treatments. Uh, these are, um, we, we've documented several case studies and brought forward the best practices. Uh, how do they test the material? What are the specifications in use? Uh, for recycled asphalt pavement. And again, these specifically relate to chip seals, microsurfacing, and slurry seals. Uh, we uh, eliminated the use of wrap and thin HMA overlays uh, from the study because there's been lots of work in that area. Uh, and so our goal is to provide documentation and guidance for practitioners as they consider uh, using wrap uh, recycled asphalt pavement in pavement preservation uh, projects. Uh, the project is conducted under uh, seven different tasks. Uh, the first was to conduct a kickoff meeting with the project panel. That was done back in 2016. Uh, and then to review literature really to uh, identify what is the current state of the practice. Um, so we'll tell you what we found there. Uh, the third step, after we identified what the current state of the practice was, was to develop a work plan to determine how we would conduct the rest of the study. Uh, task four was to conduct the study. And so, as Morgan said, uh, crisscrossing the country for uh, gaining that experience was uh, conducted in task four. And that resulted in delivery of a draft uh, final report. Uh, task five, hey, we're here today to uh, report uh, via the web what we've, uh, what we've done. Task six is to uh, publish a tech brief in, HM, in FHWA format, so that will be forthcoming. Um, and task seven is to deliver and publish all the final project documentation. So we are nearing the conclusion of the project, and uh, it's, it's been uh, really interesting from my standpoint to, um, to conduct the study and to meet the folks that uh, have that experience in using uh, recycled asphalt pavement in their pavement preservation treatments. And so the first thing we need to talk about is what is wrap and what how do we how do we characterize recycled asphalt pavement and what we know is that wrap is a valuable byproduct of milling or coal planing processes uh, where a contractor is out uh, reshaping the roadway uh, millings are produced uh, and in most cases, that material is salvaged and either kept by the owner or retained by the milling contractor or an asphalt mixture producer. Uh, the materials components 
that make up RAP are usually from a, a high quality aggregate source which has been approved for including in asphalt mixtures. So this is a high quality material and it has an intrinsic uh, value even though it's a byproduct from a, another construction process. What we understand about material behavior of RAP in asphalt mixtures has been studied uh, significantly and characterized for many years. The term black rock relates that the source is primarily an aggregate that's, quote, that's coated by an asphalt film. It implies that RAP typically behaves like another rock when included in the matrix of compacted asphalt. However, uh, research has shown that some mixture properties normally attributed to the asphalt binder uh, are affected by the introduction of wrap binder. This implies that some interaction occurs between the wrap binder and the asphalt materials uh, remixed into the into the hot mix asphalt. We think this behavior is similar when the wrap comes into contact with asphalt emulsion to be used in uh, either a chip seal, uh, slurry seal, or microsurface. Um, so very, excuse me, pardon me, very similar. Uh, we also have to treat the wrap. We have to process it in some way. Uh, and so for, uh, for it to be used in surface treatments, uh, it may either be crushed to um, uh, get wrap conglomerates down in size, or uh, it may be uh, certainly fractionated which is a dividing process to separate the uh, coarse fraction of the aggregate from the fines. Uh, this is typically what we've, what we've found is that uh, when it's fractionated, most wrap piles typically uh, come out about 40% coarse with about 60% fines. So a little bit out of balance there, and we'll, we'll talk more about that as we go through. When we dove into the uh, literature, it was sort of a shallow pool. Uh, we didn't uh, find an abundance of literature specifically related to wrap use in pavement preservation treatments. Uh, we found that California had a, a, a maturing industry where a lot of uh, localities uh, had, had um, been using the materials and um, were progressing, writing specifications, things of that nature. Uh, New Mexico also had done a research project, so we were uh, pleased that we found folks that had been documenting their, their use of RAP, uh, but it, it sort of left us uh, with a, uh, a shallow pool to draw from, but it introduced us to several people uh, who we drew on as resources to help identify what the current state of the practice was. And I want to recognize those folks right now. It was uh, Scott Metcalf, uh, who works for Ergon Asphalt and Emulsions there in California, Buzz Powell with the National Center for Asphalt Technology, uh, Doug Ford uh, with Pavement Coatings Incorporated, Don Matthews with Pavement Recycling Systems, uh, Van Truong from the Los Angeles County Public Works, uh, Angel Lemus from San Bernardino County there in California as well, uh, Mike Hemsley from Paragon Technical Services, and Virgil Valdez from the New Mexico DOT Research Bureau. So we, we talked to these folks quite intensively, conducted about an hour and a half uh, interview with each one of those, asked for um, more uh, information for them as, as we could. And uh, they were very generous with us in providing uh, their history and using wrap materials in pavement preservation treatments. And we could not have conducted the uh, research project without their assistance. So uh, very thankful for their involvement in this effort.
So with the early findings or with the uh, initial work that we did talking to folks, reading the literature, uh, we found there were basically three reasons uh, that people were using recycled asphalt pavement in preservation treatments. Uh, number one uh, was that it was cost effective. Uh, there is an economic advantage for using wrap in pavement preservation treatments if the wrap is viewed as a surplus material uh, and is made available for that purpose. Uh, additionally, environmental sustainability uh, was one of the reasons folks had, had done this. For instance, Los Angeles County had committed to using uh, available methods to implement its program while minimizing the impact to natural resources and reusing those available materials. Uh, the third main reason that we saw uh, the use of wrap is it was uh, an alternate to those scarce aggregate resources that existed. Uh, and so San Bernardino County, the New Mexico Department of Transportation, found that wrap provided an alternative to those virgin aggregates and increased supply options for their chip seal components. Uh, and so those were the basic reasons that folks were using wrap. Certainly, uh, you're going to hear more about those from the uh, other speakers online uh, and as we go through the, the case studies. We looked also at what are the differences in using wrap. What do people have to consider before they can adopt the use of wrap? Uh, and we broke that up into uh, chip seals and then into uh, slurry systems, basically a microsurface or slurry seal. Uh, so uh, when comparing wrap treatments to virgin, the wrap treatment seemed, and this is for chip seals, seemed to develop an adhesive bond better than virgin aggregate, or at least similar to if the aggregate were pre-coated with asphalt. Uh, further, the color of the treatment aggregate remained blacker, it's quote unquote blacker, longer, uh, which was per a perceived advantage to the public. Uh, the darker color resembled asphalt paved roads and provided a better contrast for pavement marking. So it was very similar uh, if you took a, uh, a, a standard chip seal and then applied a fog coat after it, that was the same sort of uh, darker texture that the pavement exhibited. Uh, for microsurfacing and slurry seals, designers identified a 1 to 2 percent reduction in the required asphalt emulsion uh, for those systems. Uh, since the wrap aggregate is mostly coated with asphalt, the surface area of those particles uh, that requires covering with emulsion is generally reduced. Uh, it is believed that the reduced surface area also reduces the reaction or the reactivity of that aggregate with the emulsion. And the set time uh, is slightly longer, uh, which could affect your, your lane closure. So we're, we're looking at um, a 1 to 2 percent reduction in virgin asphalt emulsion, so instead of a uh, 13 to 15 range, we're generally look, looking at an 11 to 13 range. So a couple of percent in, in virgin asphalt reduction there. And we may see some slower set, or less reactive material, so a slight adjustment to the chemical makeup of the asphalt emulsion that's being used. So those are the, um, pardon me, those are the uh, initial early findings that we we identified in the project. I've got some questions for you now. So uh, just in hearing what um, we've presented so far, uh, we have some questions for you. Does your organization own RAP in significant quantities? So we're looking not only uh, we'd like for you to identify it, yes, we own a lot of RAP, and here's who I am. We're looking to expand our uh, knowledge base a little bit on uh, who, who owns RAP, who maintains their own stockpiles. Uh, 
We have another question there. Do your uh, pavement preservation specifications currently allow wrap use? Uh, a follow-up to that is down on the lower left-hand corner. Uh, would you accept wrap as a pre-coated aggregate in your chip seals? Um, so I appreciate you uh, uh, filling in those answers now. Um, another question is, do you have this processing equipment? Do you have access to it? Uh, do you already own it? Is it available in a rental contract available to you? Is it a uh, something you might hire as a service or as part of a contract? Uh, or is this the you have uh, you don't know how to access and you you don't have any experience doing that so uh, going to allow you just a, f a few more seconds there to respond to all four of those questions if you would uh, and I'll be right back with you Right. Thank you very much. It looks like uh, we do have some uh, responses coming in. What we found across the nation is um, what we're seeing here that in a lot of places the contractors own uh, the wrap. It's been salvaged by the agencies and uh, the uh, contractors are taking possession. There are a few uh, folks who who do own their their wrap? Looks like uh, Arkansas DOT is looking to start using wrap. Uh, there may be several others, so uh, we will be uh, keeping these results to do a little bit more uh, digging in. So if you get a uh, phone call from one of our uh, team, um, don't be surprised. Uh, not seeing many uh, folks outside of California that allow uh, wrap use in their pavement preservation treatments. Uh, some say, uh, I see a response there from Delaware that says, uh, for warm mix asphalt, yes, uh, chipping treated as a black rock. So. Uh, I think that's sort of what uh, is going to be required for adopting wrap. I want to share the uh, fractionation equipment. Go ahead and uh, click one of those boxes there if you haven't already, and we'll uh, – uh, well, we don't need to end that, do we? Okay. I promise I'm not talking to myself. Uh, but you can see there 40% uh, would hire it as a uh, service. A few own it, a few more have it available to rent, and uh, about 40% uh, aren't familiar with the uh, fractionation equipment or, or how to get a hold of it. So I appreciate your, your uh, efforts there to provide us some information, and we'll go back to our uh, presentation now. All right. Uh, to uh, answer one of those questions, uh, Steve, yes, the slides will be made available. Uh, I will. Uh, I've got them in a uh, share pod over on the uh, right hand side of my screen, and we will work on getting those uh, available to you by the end of the webinar. So, yes, the slides will be available. Um, Our first case study uh, comes from the National Center for Asphalt Technology down in Auburn, Alabama. Uh, they've uh, NCAT has operated a test track. Uh, I know uh, several in the southeast and uh, Minnesota, other states uh, have participated with NCAT in that research. Uh, what we what we're showing here is uh, let me grab my pointer. So we're, we're seeing a uh, section of chip seal that was applied with pre-coated number sevens uh, in, the, in the background of the slide. And in the foreground, we're seeing uh, the wrap chip seal. So 
Uh, both of these were put down with an asphalt rubber um, binder material. And you can see a little bit different uh, color, certainly, and surface texture uh, in the um, in the surface. Um, so one section used wrap while the second used pre-coated number sevens. Uh, in the photo, notice the darker color. Uh, the pre-coated number seven section is in the background. Uh, the treatments were loaded according to their normal cycle, so uh, approximately 10 million easels over two years. Uh, and uh, NCAT just does an enormous job in gathering performance data. And so this, this might have been the most controlled uh, sections that we were able to observe. Uh, they didn't have, you know, the normal lifespan of a pavement preservation treatment is 6, 7, 10, 12 years. So uh, seeing the environmental distress that might occur over two years is not necessarily uh, indicative there. But uh, certainly very good data was collected here. Um, so under those conditions, loading with uh, 10 million easels over two years, uh, the treatment resistance to cracking and weathering was deemed equivalent between the two treatments. So the virgin aggregate and the wrap aggregate. Uh, performed equivalently in that regard. And the. Um, Let's see, also uh, they noticed that the uh, wrap section uh, had significantly lower uh, friction numbers than the pre-coated virgin section. So we suspect that the uh, wrap section was using a wrap product that had been milled from both a, a surface or a uh, binder layer. So uh, could have been some polished susceptible aggregates. So that's one of the concerns that um, we might take a look at. Um, moving on, our next case study was with Paragon Technical Services. Uh, Mr. Mike Hemsley was our host there. Uh, they design, what Paragon does is they design slurry seals and microsurface mix designs for clients across the country. They've developed several treatment designs using wrap materials. Uh, in order to complete the mixture designs, uh, their findings are not all aggregate quality tests can be performed as if the materials are virgin. For instance, the gradation of materials are measured before and after extraction. Uh, and so running gradations on this material, you know, it is just what it is. And so the, the materials have sort of a cohesive, uh, boundary layer around the aggregates, uh, and so uh, you end up with some small conglomerates there. Uh, and so trying to trying to control this material based on gradation, uh, you know, in neither case does the washed gradation or the extracted gradation, does it meet uh, a standard uh, type 1, type 2, type 3, uh, slurry or microsurface gradation. Uh, and so during the design, more emphasis is placed on the performance related design specifications for the treatment as compared to the gradation. Uh, when designed, the mixtures meet the same wet track abrasion and loaded wheel tester requirements as for the virgin aggregate. Uh, Mike pointed out that less asphalt emulsion is typically required to coat the, the wrap particles, uh, which results in a lower design emulsion content. So there again, typically the emulsion requirement is reduced by 1.5 to 2% as compared to a design uh, from the same general area uh, using virgin aggregate. So we did try to, we did try to uh, identify that.
Next up, I'd like to introduce a co-presenter. Uh, Lisa Vega is the uh, Assistant Director of District 6 for the New Mexico DOT. She covers uh, the construction section. Uh, District 6 is headquartered in Grants, New Mexico. Uh, and I, I did want to point out, as a former DOT maintenance uh, employee, that uh, Lisa, during the research phase of this uh, the work they did in New Mexico, she was the District 6 maintenance engineer. So uh, in, a rare, in, in rare cases, uh, folks come into maintenance and then get promoted into construction. Typically, it's the other way around. So I've kidded uh, Lisa a good bit that uh, she had a, uh, an opposite direction career flow there. But uh, welcome to Lisa. Uh, happy to have you uh, presenting here. Uh, take it away. Thank you. I appreciate that. Hello. As introduced, my name is Lisa Vega. Uh, the New Mexico Department of Transportation is comprised of six districts. So I'm in District 6, which, as you can see on the slide, is the northwest portion of New Mexico. So as stated, I currently manage our highway construction program, but I did spend 10 years in maintenance before coming to construction. Okay, so in District 6, we primarily use asphalt overlays or inlays and chip seals as our typical pavement preservation treatments. So approved aggregate sources are getting scarce, and it's not uncommon for aggregate to be hauled 100 miles or more to a project. For projects that require cold milling or planing, we retain the majority of the millings, which are stockpiled, with, stockpiled within the NMDOT right-of-way. So because we had accumulated an excess amount of milling, we decided to begin experimenting with how we could utilize them. We contracted with the University of New Mexico in 2015 to evaluate the best, most economical uses for wrap or millings. The, this study was completed in May of 2017. From early findings of the study, the leading uses that we found were most beneficial were chip seals. Trial sections of chip, chip seals were placed in several rural roadways where virgin and surface treatment aggregates were typically hauled great distances and stockpiled for use. These trial sections included virgin materials and wrap materials. We saw more favorable results with the chip seals done with the wrap. Since 2015, the practice has grown and our crews actually prefer the wrap chip seals over the virgin aggregate. At the NMDOT, we use internal crews to place chip seals. However, we now issue contracts to have the raw milling process into surface treatment aggregate used for chip seals. The contractor sets up at the milling stockpile location, processes the millings into the required gradation, and hauls the material to project staging locations. The resulting fines that are left over are restockpiled and used for other purposes. In comparing the prices for the wrap and virgin chip seals, if I could get the slide to, there we go. Uh, the wrap aggregate was processed and delivered for approximately 58% of the cost for the virgin aggregate. So as you can see from the slide, it's $23.50 for wrap as compared to $40.21 for the virgin aggregate. Okay, so a similar, okay. So we found that we didn't need to adjust the application rate for the wrap material. We could actually utilize the same application rates or lower very slightly when compared to the virgin material. Typically, we use an application rate of about 0.45 gallons per square yard. And of course, this varies with each road. So normally, we actually perform several test strips to determine the best application rate. What we observed was that the wrap chip seals have less chip loss. 
the excess binder left on the aggregate actually helps the emulsion bind to the chip. So we have also noticed that wrapped chip seals will generally have a darker surface color, which enhances pavement marking contrast, which is a safety benefit. Also, considering safety, our materials pavement evaluation unit compared the surface friction for both wrap and virgin chip seals. They measured similar skid resistance with the agency skid rig, so we saw actually no difference in, the, in, the, in those measurements. While our maintenance forces have used the remaining fine fraction for sh shoulder stabilization and pipe bedding, the agency is still interested in finding the best use for this material. In District 6, we also use wrap blended in earthwork at a range of about 40 to 60 percent for construction projects. We have not considered the use of this material in microsurfacing, and the reason for that is that we don't do very many microsurfacing projects because rutting is not a major factor in my district. Other districts have attempted to use the fines for scrub seals. One main observation from this application was the resulting bleeding that occurred, and this was most likely due to the fine material having the majority of the remaining binder. So this concludes my portion of the presentation. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Lisa. Uh, we have one more case study uh, specifically that deals with uh, an agency using wrap materials for chip seals, and that's San Bernardino County. So these folks, uh, they operate uh, so San Bernardino County is in Southern California, but it is the largest county in the United States, uh, they reported to me. So uh, I know I-40 picks up there, goes all the way through my home state of uh, Tennessee and over to Wilmington, but uh, it's in San Bernardino County for, uh, I think, the longest mileage of any other county in the U.S. So. Uh, that size brings with it um, certain complications as they uh, address their uh, pavement preservation needs. And so what, what we found from San Bernardino County is that they began constructing wrap chip seals in 2014 after learning of the treatment's successful use in Los Angeles County. So you'll hear from Los Angeles County shortly. Uh, but San Bernardino County places chip seals with a nomadic crew. They go out for weeks at a time placing uh, chip seals around their county. Uh, and they contract for the delivery of construction materials to the treatment site. They typically may only receive one or two bids for supplying virgin aggregate, depending on the treatment location. Uh, most of the time, the successful bidder is determined by the mileage or the haul cost to those locations. Um, so what they found, by allowing wrap chips to be bid as an alternate material, they were able to increase their um, overall uh, bid competitiveness, and they saved up to 30 uh, percent by allowing chips to be um, bid as an alternate there. So for San Bernardino County, it was largely a decision. Uh, we need more competition in our, in our pa pavement preservation program. Our aggregates are scarce, and uh, we need another alternative. And so they have uh, readily accepted the use of uh, wrap chips in their, in their materials. Uh, I'll also point out they did have some issues uh, using a double chip application where both the underlying and the top coat material were both wrap aggregates. They, they um, have tried a few of those and have seen a, a little bit of bleeding. So that's a, that's a concern for um, for San Bernardino County and, uh, and using uh, multiple wrap chip layers. So moving on, another co-presenter, I'm pleased to introduce Van Truong, the pavement engineer from Los Angeles County Public Works. Uh, Van was very helpful in identifying 
uh, who else was using uh, wrap materials in their pavement preservation treatments, and we welcome him and appreciate his contributions today. Okay, Van. Thank you, Greg. Hopefully everyone can hear me. Um, again, Yes, you you're coming through me. loud and uh, clear. Thanks. Good morning. Um, again, my, my name is Van Trong. I'm the payment engineer at Los Angeles County Public Works. I'm working under the payment management unit uh, within our division. So just quickly, I'm going to work through the slides. As far as LA County um, goes, we use recycled materials, basically wrap in our preservation treatment. This is one of uh, Los Angeles County three-pronged sustainable initiative. Wrap used in conventional hot makes is something that we have been doing for, for many years. But today, I wanted to highlight the use of wrap in our payment preservation treatment. This process really helped us to use more recycled millings in our payment treatments rather than virgin aggregate that's being mined from the earth. In fact, in 2012, LA County has committed to use 100% wrap to replace virgin aggregate for all of our payment preservation projects. It started in the rural region, which is in our North County region, and then continued to basically migrate into the urbanized area in the basin, the Los Angeles basin. As part of the LA County three-prong sustainable approach, our main focus is Number one is to preserve our pavement, and it's through two methods. Number one is to really do preservation when the roads are in good condition first. But we also use pavement preservation as a avenue to preserve and extend the life of roads that are in fair and poor condition, to give them some life before we can come back and have enough funding to do more. But the idea is really to catch those roads before they fall into a next uh, condition category because, as you can see, it gets more expensive. This chart here at the top, it basically shows you the green to red color. As each level goes down, the cost to treat the roads will be higher. So we're really trying to focus on catching those roads between they fall to the next condition category. So preservation strategy is really a, a low-cost preventive maintenance activity. Um, when talking about slurry seal, chip seal, cave seal, uh, microsurfacing, double chip seal, pretty much all that is, consists of uh, our preservation strategy. It's just like painting your house every 10 years or changing oil of your car every three to 5,000 miles. It's a way for us to preserve our asset in a tip-top shape. So this practice is just really is less, far less expensive than a major repair. And obviously, we just, in LA County and I'm sure in other agencies, just we don't have the all the money in the world to make all our roads um, with hot mix. So based on our use of wrap in payment preservation treatment, uh, we really found that it not only preserved the roads uh, and resulted in payment conditions as we expected that it would do, it would do but it's also uh, safe and reduced the need to tap into our uh, raw natural resources for aggregates. Right now, as LA County, we are using 100% wrap, as I mentioned earlier. And the program, the Cape Seal program, has one example that we are 
currently really focus on is consists of a three process, um, three step, let's put it that way. We introduce uh, this process called micromilling. It's a technique very similar to a co-milling. Uh, before we put down what we call a cape seal. Um, the micro-milling is what the difference between micro-milling and the co-milling is really is the drum and the teeth. Uh, the idea is really is just to scratch the surface and, and smooth out the existing pavement uh, by hitting it, you know, plus or minus one-eighth of an inch. Uh, the benefit with the micro-milling is to improve the rideability of the road and clean up the edge of gutters um, where the old slurry may have built up over the years and it creates a better bonding surface for the subsequent layers of materials that we're going to be placing on top of the existing pavement, which will be a cave seal. So the cave seal is a combination of a chip seal uh, for us, we're using scrub seal, very similar to the chip seal. It just has a scrub broom. If you, um, you can imagine, this this broom is kind of just brushing the surface, barely touching the surface, and it, it pushing the oil into the cracks. And so this is what we call a scrub seal. And finally, we put a uh, a slurry on top. And so both the scrub seal and slurry seal are 100% wrap that we are currently uh, using. So moving on, this is an example of a project uh, that we did um, within the unincorporated South Whittier area, if you're familiar with, with LA. But this neighborhood uh, was treated in 2010 with the conventional um, slurry over the um, a ramp, and again, it was all version aggregate, and um, this is right before we transition to a 100% um, wrap concept. And so, this map sort of reflects the conditions. Um, and if you look at the map at the bottom, it tells you that the last treatment was back in October 2010, and so this map kind of showcased the conditions that is currently last evaluated back in March 2019. And so in the various color kind of, um, is we, we break our PCI conditions into five condition categories. So it's just showing you the different conditions based on the color of those lines. Um, and this slide show you the before conditions uh, in 2010 and the conditions uh, that we found in 2016. Um, this is the same location. Obviously, some changes throughout the neighbor, neighborhood, but this is the, the same location. If you're looking at the distresses that um, that's showing on the photos. Um, so before 2010, we did a payment evaluation in 2008, two years before the treatment. And what we found was the alligator and map cracking was occurring very frequently, 20 to 25 percent, with a, 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 a few slight transfers in longitudinal cracking. And so that's something that we, we documented in 2008 and it has a PCI. It was in the, you know, in the mid-high 70s. So it was in, in good condition. So we put the treatment down in in 2010, and after that, five years later, in 2015, uh, early 2016, we did another round of payment evaluation, and what we found was the cracking, map cracking, transverse, and longitudinal cracking, they are all still there, but it was much less. So it was in the 10 to 20 percent range, and the way to pick PCI was still in the mid-70s. Uh, and most recently, uh, it was early in 2019, nine years later, the conditions basically came in with a 10 to 30 percent of MAP transfers and longitudinal cracking. 
and basically it dropped the T-side to low 70s. So uh, this nine years um, really give you a perspective of the Cape Seal that has basically maintained in that fair range. Um, and it really it performed what was expected. We expect the Cape Seal to last six to eight years, uh, depending on the conditions. And so, um, so moving on, I want to showcase another project. This is uh, also something that was done using the Cape Seal method, uh, as well as the micro milling um, method. This project was done in October 2012, and this is the time when we actually introduced the uh, wrap treatment in our preservation uh, treatment. Uh, so it's right at the beginning of that transition period. Um, we use um, micromilling. We use the uh, ARAM. So the ARAM, again, it wasn't wrap, but for the slurry, it was 100% wrap. So this is just the very first project that we did down here in the LA Basin. And so this map gives you a perspective of the conditions uh, as of March 2019 uh, of how the conditions uh, is now. So I'm going to go over a little bit of the detail. And so this project was, uh, again, um, polymer modified emulsion wrap slurry. That's what the PME RAS slurry stands for, uh, plus the ARAM. And so before the treatment in 2012, we conducted a payment conditions evaluation in 2011. And what we found was the uh, distresses were uh, alligator cracking frequently in the 25 to 30 percent range, and slight map longitudinal and transverse cracking. Very typical for our residential street down here. Uh, and the PCI was 64, which is in the middle of the fair condition. In 2015, uh, about three years after the treatment, the PCI um, was 86. So let's say it's in good, excellent condition. And so that was a very good good result, and the cracking was pretty much, uh, everything was less than 10%. But then in most recent rating, in March 2019, we had a PCI uh, in the mid-70s. So it was 76, and it was still in the, the, basically, the very high end of the fair and the bottom end of the good condition with uh, cracking uh, map transverse and longitudinal cracking um, that was in the 12-17% range. So as you can see, the condition is holding very well with the cave seal. Again, this cave seal was used as a stopgap measure, what we call it. Uh, it's not truly a pr payment preservation because the roads wasn't in good condition from the beginning. but it lasted for these many years. So that was basically a great um, case study to show that um, a Cape Seal really gave us the ability to preserve the road for a good six to eight years. Um, what we noticed was the cracking, not only um, the severity, which is typically is consist as, considered as the, the width of the crack, uh, not only the severity level has reduced by using a cave seal uh, as a methodology to preserve the road, but also the um, extent, basically the percent of cracking has reduced significantly as well. Uh, and this is something that we observed and really found no difference between the use of wrap uh, in our uh, preservation strategy versus version aggregate. So ever since, we are using 100% RAP in all of our case seal projects. In the rural area, we're using 100% RAP for the chip seal. Uh, double chip seal, as Greg mentioned earlier, uh, the bleeding could be a problematic uh, when you're using RAP for both layers. Uh, so it's best uh, to use, um, I would say, you know, moving forward, you probably need to 
uh, use uh, a one layer aspersion possibly just to reduce the chance of, um, of bleeding um, and, and just something to consider. Um, but that concluded my, um, my topic. Thank you. Great, you could take it back. Very good, Van. Thank you very much for um, telling us all about your program. I mean, it's, uh, Los Angeles County uh, has done a fantastic job of implementing RAP on their own. Uh, their job order contract is a, uh, uh, for me, was a really good um, example of how to implement pavement preservation projects. Uh, it's. Uh, uh, I hope uh, hope that can be shared with folks as they uh, get interested in doing this. Uh, really good specifications. Um, our next case study is with Pavement Coatings Incorporated. They're uh, based in Southern California. Uh, so their story begins uh, early in the 2000s. And there's a company called Pavement Recycling Systems uh, that provide pavement recycling services, which are primarily full depth reclamation and coal planing on resurfacing projects. Uh, so this company had accumulated millings as part of their business model and supplied wrap to asphalt mix producers, but also looked for other opportunities for using those wrap materials. And so uh, pavement recycling systems approached uh, pavement coatings, which pavement coatings is an application company. Um, they approached uh, pavement coatings to determine could wrap be used as a source aggregate or aggregate replacement in their treatments. Um, and so they did some test sections. They approached some uh, municipalities about trying this on some of their some of their projects. Folks were agreeable to do that. Uh, so kudos for, for uh, agencies being willing to try some new things and experiment a little bit um, to advance the progress of the industry. Uh, so these two companies, having determined that it was feasible uh, in their mind, seeing good performance on those test sections, um, they, they determined it was feasible to use those RAP treatments. And the two companies merged in 2007. So um, now when you say pavement recycling systems, you're actually talking about uh, pavement coatings as well. So. Uh, they're joined at the hip. Uh, having determined uh, this success, uh, they started marketing those treatments to uh, agencies across the, uh, the region there, so where they do business. Uh, company managers reported that the wrap chips are used at a much faster rate than the fine materials. So for them, it's beneficial to market the use of slurry and micro uh, because just like in Van's example, you take a, a micro milling project that generates millings and then you apply a, a 3 8 scrub seal and then you apply a, a, a slurry seal on top of that. And so in, in one mechanism there, you're generating wrap millings you're using those as uh, a scrub seal material, so the coarse fraction, and then you're using the slurry seal uh, material, the fine fraction, all at the same time. So that's a uh, fairly sustainable operation. But even in that example, the chips are in higher demand than the fine materials uh, based on the thickness and how, uh, how many pounds per square yard those materials are applied. So Looking at looking at the findings from pavement coatings, um, again, it's to their advantage to try to balance production or to balance the the fines use uh, going out the door uh, of their supply uh, facilities. Um, 
Anecdotally, pavement coatings reports that construction of multi-lift chip seals using wrap is slightly more sensitive to bleeding than virgin aggregate uh, with an equivalent binder shot rate or a uh, similar uh, thickness or similar size stone. Uh, so they suggest reducing the binder shot rate slightly on both lifts if wrap chips are being used to mitigate a tendency to bleed. Um, also during construction, it's recommended to specify that a rubber tire roller be used to seat uh, slurry and microsurfaces after the initial set. It's thought that this reorients the particles slightly uh, and provides a better bonding to the underlying pavement. After making these fine adjustments to their construction process, they have seen very good performance with wrap treatments. And they stand behind their product. They claim it is equivalent to uh, treatment performance using virgin aggregate. So this is a photo of one of the uh, pavement recycling systems uh, facilities uh, operating near San Bernardino, California. And I show you this just as an example. Um, I'm going to drag my, my pointer down here again. Uh, so the coarse pile, this is a fractionation plant where the material, uh, it, it progresses into a crusher screener unit uh, right here. And then the materials that uh, are Coarser than that gets crushed, uh, material passes through that, and then it goes through some secondary processing. The chip pile is here at the um, far end of the yard, while you see the wrap fine pile uh, is here in the, in the foreground, and that pile is growing. Uh, so that's, that's one of the issues with this uh, process, again, is that the coarse material is in much higher demand than the fine material. Um, so Doug Ford is a uh, is the manager there at Pavement Coatings, and I talked to him about what they've learned and how do they how do they market this product to. Uh, the local agencies. Um, and so uh, he began describing to me their philosophy, and it's, um, you know, what is the risk to the agency of using RAP? And uh, what, I've, what I've learned is that the agencies are concerned about getting a subpar material to virgin aggregate. And so how would it be subpar? Uh, well, it's either uh, contaminated or it won't perform uh, the way that material is. And so uh, the question that's being asked is, is this aggregate dirty? And so having looked at this, um, you know, the aggregate is coated with an asphalt film, and there are some uh, fine particles uh, collected on that. If we zoomed in on this picture, you would see some of those coarse aggregates with some little uh, conglomerates or nodules on the side adhered to those. Um, and so uh, people have to accept that that's uh, the way it works. Uh, LA County, San Bernardino County, New Mexico DOT, they've all used uh, gradation tests to limit the amount of fine material accepted with the wrap, so they're, they're running a, a dry gradation typically on their chips to see how much uh, fine material is coming in with those. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, LA County also relies on the sand equivalent test to identify materials that may have too many uh, clay sized particles. So uh, materials are qualified on the front end uh, that they meet those specifications, they meet the gradation requirements for your general chip seals. And so these materials uh, have been accepted. Uh, but in essence, these agencies have used conventional tests to accept the wrap materials for pavement preservation projects. 
and the performance of those seem to support wrap use. Pardon me. So significant conclusions have been gleaned from this project. Um, what we found as a research team uh, looking at these findings, and, and we'll try to highlight a few of those, uh, the largest question in identifying if RAP can be used in pavement preservation treatments is who owns it? Who owns the RAP? If agencies have access to RAP that's considered a, a surplus material or a surplus product, uh, then RAP may be a successful alternative to virgin aggregate. Uh, however, if RAP is owned by uh, someone who's not doing uh, pavement preservation projects, for instance, uh, there's not much uh, likelihood of it being a cost-effective alternative. So uh, really that's one of the, the big questions is does an agency uh, own this material, have it delivered back to their own facility after it's been milled off the, the roadway? Uh, so that's a, that's a question. Uh, for each agency to answer. Um, secondly, several case studies have presented anecdotal evidence that chip seals can be constructed using the coarse fractionated wrap that perform equivalently to chip seals constructed with virgin materials. Uh, benefits have been discussed that include better bonding to the applied binder, a blacker surface, uh, and less chip loss as compared to virgin aggregate applications. Uh, the material application rates are similar, although we all know that uh, they require uh, field adjustment once we're out there uh, within a, a small range. Um, and lower costs have been documented in several cases using RAP. Um, thirdly, using RAP in slurry and microsurfacing treatments is much less common than a RAP chip seal. In the locations where it has been used successfully, slide adjustments have been made to the design and construction process. Uh, look at the rubber tire roller. There's some uh, alterations that will be covered in the report that include uh, rolling some of those test specimens to seat them uh, prior to the uh, wet track test being run. Uh, the mixed designs for these materials uh, have been shown to require approximately 1 to 2 percent lower emulsion contents uh, at their optimum condition. Um, however, they do have a, an overall higher emulsion content or a higher asphalt content uh, looking at the, at the whole system. So that wrap asphalt um, comes in pretty uh, significantly with the with the wrap aggregate. Uh, in conclusion, uh, the use of wrap and surface treatments has been reported by a number of agencies. Uh, in addition to the case study agencies uh, we've presented, additional users have been identified since the project work was approved and we started down this path. Um, they include chip seal use in New York, North Dakota, Pennsylvania, Ohio, uh, and slurry seals have been tested in Texas, we understand. Uh, agencies presented in the case study have all anticipated their use of RAP in preservation treatments to increase in the future, and that will continue uh, to include RAP in their strategies to manage their roadway networks. Summarizing, RAP use in preservation treatment seems to be expanding rapidly. So with that, I would ask, uh, try to turn our attention to the uh, question and answer pod over on the right-hand side. It looks like we've got uh, had several questions asked and answered, so you're uh, free to 
uh, observe those uh, there. We also have um, a question about would RAP aggregate pass the LA abrasion test. Um, I did see some record of extracted RAP uh, being tested for abrasion. That was one of the uh, van, I believe that's one of the tests that uh, Los Angeles County requires. So you may speak to that. I agree. Yes, uh, definitely. We, in our spec, we actually have a methodology somewhat modified for the wet track operation test uh, on the RAP story. Um, it was something that was found when we were using RAP story early on that, hey, how come the wet track operation test keep failing? And one thing we learned was that during construction, they actually put a uh, rubber um, tire roller on the RAP slurry after it has been set. Uh, Basically, before they open the street back to traffic, they run the RTR uh, three passes to knead the material down and, and make sure that it is nice and um, just, you know, something that was just something that was incorporated as part of the wrap slurry. But during the wet track abrasion test, that wasn't part of the test procedure. And so we found that our lab, um, our, our lab testing um, uh, division, found that that was something that was missing. So ever since um, we modified and, and adjusted the, the test uh, method in our spec, that we actually need to um, do that. And so it's something that I think I could share uh, with Greg, and, and Greg can share with others. It's just a specification from our from our um, contract, um, and and after that, um, adding that that single procedure uh, on the abrasion test, the wet track abrasion test. Uh, ever since the tests basically are passing, and obviously there's not nothing wrong in the field, and everything looks great, but. A failed test really doesn't justify what you actually see in the field. So that's something that I think uh, uh, we put the effort in and, and, and uh, closer look on it, on it. Thanks. Thank you, Van. Uh, we had a couple more questions. Uh, what aggregate gradations or micro aggregate gradations were used in fractionated wrap projects uh, in San Bernardino? So the San Bernardino County typically uses a 5 16 inch uh, chip size for their chip seals. Um, San Bernardino County didn't do, um, I don't think they did micro uh, surfacing, but what we've seen is typically a the the wrap gradation most closely mimics a top two uh, gradation. It's a it's a little bit different. Either way you look at it, whether it's a wash gradation of the fine fraction of wrap or a, an extracted gradation, uh, it doesn't exactly fall into a top two. Uh, gradation band that's accepted by ISSA. So it's uh, that's that's what I meant by it's it's a little bit different animal. It just sort of stands on its own. So um, but most when you fractionate that material it most closely resembles a top two aggregate. So I hope that or a top two slurry seal microsurfacing uh, gradation. So I hope that I hope that works for you. Uh, another question uh, for hot applied chip sealing using wrap, another saving was in the uh, requirement for pre-coated rock. Yes, absolutely. We've seen uh, pre-coated rock be a uh, success factor for uh, hot applied chip seals, uh, a reduction in uh, chip loss. So yes, uh, being able to use wrap rather than requiring that material to be run through a hot mix plant would be a 
would be a uh, cost competitive issue. Um, a question about uh, what do you run into with changing oil contents in the wrap material? Um, so uh, this may be a good question for Van, but I'll, I'll tell you from a, the, the contractors that I spoke with uh, felt uh, fairly assured that they could maintain the uh, asphalt content of their fractionated products uh, pretty consistently uh, with minimal variability. So I'll, I'll uh, take a uh, vague answer and let Van uh, answer more specifically if you'd like to. Greg, can you repeat the question? Mm -hmm. Sorry okay, so the question is uh, what kind of issues do you run into with changing or varying oil contents in the wrap material? So if the asphalt content of the wrap is going up and down or varying, uh, have you seen yeah, that at all? Good. I know you have pretty good quality control requirements on your on your projects, but I, I didn't know if you could speak to what variability might do to you. Yeah, I, I don't know if I, I have all, uh, a good answer for that question. But obviously, the spec for the RAF slurry is written. Um, we ha we use the Green Book uh, here in California, uh, in, in the county of Los Angeles. The Green Book is, uh, is more of a local agency uh, specification. Um, but the RAF slurry actually is not in the Green Book yet. Uh, it's, it's in our special provision. And that was something that I think we worked closely with um, with uh, the various contractors and and to establish a, a spec for the RAF slurry. Uh, I think uh, I, I I just don't don't I, as far as field testing goes, I don't think we had much issues with the variation of the the, the binder in the wrap. Um, maybe I could. Um, talk a little bit more with our folks. Um, yeah, sorry, so I couldn't get you a good good answer on that. That's okay. We appreciate the question. We appreciate uh, your efforts in uh, trying to respond. At this point in the um, presentation, I want to throw back up those final questions that we had identified and allow you to to respond. So. Please identify the agency that you're a part of when you respond, if you don't mind, and and just tell us. You know, Morgan and I have talked about this a good bit. What what barriers do you have to using those wrap materials? Is it a is it a, an availability issue? I mean, most of the industry that we hear from says their wrap piles are largely growing, uh, whether they're owned by an agency or by a, um, asphalt producer, so um, we think supply is there, it's just a matter of who owns it, how do you get access to it. Uh, and the second question is, what would be helpful to your agency uh, to specify RAP in pavement preservation treatments? So take just a few moments and uh, add those comments there. I see specifications being a common issue. Um, administratively, uh, now would be an appropriate time to um, allow the slides to be downloaded. Would that would that work at this point? I see other folks saying uh, getting contractor buy-in uh, is a challenge. Uh, contractors own the wrap, wrap ownership, stockpiling, processing. Um, A 
all of those things. Storage spacing. Uh, being able to separate them on the on a yard, is that what you mean uh, by storage spacing? Very good. I see some things that are covered in our report, uh, seeing the case studies, seeing the, the cost comparisons. Uh, hopefully those agencies sharing their experience with others uh, will be of benefit to you. Um, Very good. I see several people typing. Give you just a minute to to uh, post those responses. Again, I want to say thank you uh, to everyone who's participated in the webinar and is providing this information for us. Um, appreciate your interest, your time today. Uh, Just another 30 seconds or so to capture those last couple of comments, and then I'll change the um, I don't know if I can add the this share pod in for you. Yeah, I think if you uh, if you desire the the webinar slides, they're available here. Uh, it's called Wrap in PP Project Webinar Version 6. Uh, you can download that um, information now if you're interested in having those. Um, I see several folks. I see no one else typing in the, in the question area now. So I assume that the webinar slides are being downloaded. Uh, Morgan, would you like to um, close us out? Yeah, sure. Thanks, Greg. Just wanted to thank everybody for joining the webinar today. Really great information. Um, wanted to thank Greg and you know all all the people from his or his uh, company working in the background to um, make sure this webinar went smoothly and uh, thank our guest speakers as well. You guys did a great job. Um, like I said at the beginning of the present or at the beginning of the webinar, um, we'll be publishing a full report based on this research and a tech brief as well and um, should be expecting to see that uh, uh, published within the next uh, few months. Um, and uh, just want to echo uh, what Greg said. Um, thanks a lot for all the great questions. These are excellent questions. They'll really help the uh, you know, uh, let's finish out the project and uh, set direction for, uh, uh, you know, addressing needs and uh, barriers to, to adopting this technology. So, um, yeah, from Federal Highways, thanks so much. And thank you, Greg. I'll hand it back to you. All right. Thank you, Morgan. I just want to say uh, thank you to the uh, 
folks who allowed us to interview them and share their stories from the case studies. Um, we will take all these uh, comments under advisement and try to uh, address the um, uh, the needs of the community. You know, we're uh, we think we've uh, presented some good material. There's a lot of information out there. Uh, things are are continuing to grow. Uh, so we uh, we know this is a dynamic process, and we appreciate your involvement in uh, staying informed. Uh, thank you to all those folks who helped disseminate the invitation for the uh, the webinar as well, getting the word out. So uh, with that, I'll, uh, I'll say thank you very much. We will, uh, those products that have been uh, requested, we will try to make those available when the materials get published. Uh, and so hopefully you can see those. If you're in a, in a bigger hurry, uh, please feel free to reach out to me and I can get you uh, Looks like Van is willing to share his uh, special provisions uh, for the job order contract. So uh, we will get you those and uh, uh, pass those along. So with that, I'll say thank you very much. We will end recording the, the webinar now and sign off. <laughs>